Hey everyone, welcome to today's Facebook uh, Alpine Church topic for the day. I'm not even sure what these are called anymore, but I'll just get right into it. Uh, today I wanted to talk to you just a little bit from Philippians chapter 2, 12 through 13. We'll get there in just a moment. Uh, but one thing that I've noticed in my conversations with people, mentoring conversations that I've had during the COVID crisis, is that a lot of people have said this. They've said, even though I have a lot more time on my hands, even though I'm at home more, um, it's actually harder for me to read the Bible and pray than it was beforehand. Uh, I've, I've had a lot of people tell me, almost kind of confess to me that, uh, you know, I haven't read the Bible and prayed like I was before all this. And so they're kind of bummed about that. They're disappointed about that. Chances are, if you're a Christian, if you're a follower of Jesus, you know what it feels like when you're in that situation, when you feel like, man, I'm not doing something that I should. So here's the thing. Typically what happens is we know what we're supposed to do, like we should pray, we should read the Bible, we should go to church. There's all these things that we we ought to do and we don't do them. And then when we don't do them, we get really upset with ourselves and we get frustrated. Uh, and, you know, sometimes we'll pray, God, you know, um, help me to read my Bible or help me to get out of bed in the morning to pray or whatever it is. And what I'm kind of realizing, or I'll be honest, what I've been realizing for a few years now is that that might be the wrong prayer. And, and let me tell you why I think that. In Philippians 2, 12 through 13, this is what it says. It says, Dear friends, you always followed my instructions when I was with you. And now that I am away, it is even more important. Work hard to show the results of your salvation, obeying God with deep reverence and fear. Okay, so this is kind of a famous verse. I'm reading from the New Living Translation, which is a little bit different. Uh, typically, when you hear this verse, it says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. And so right away, there's a few things we need to address. Is this saying that you are in control of your salvation, that you need to do the, the hard work of salvation, you need to earn your salvation? That's not at all what it's saying. Uh, in fact, I, that's why I really like here in the New Living Translation, it says um, to work out, show the results of your salvation with with deep reverence and fear and respect toward God. And so what it's saying is once you've been saved by faith, then our lives should change. Our lives should be different. Our lives should be transformed. And um, and so it's not saying that you need to work your way to God. You need to uh, work your way to salvation. But it's saying once you have put your faith in Christ, now we need to take that seriously. And we need to see that our lives look differently. But if we stop at verse 12, we might miss out something really important. And so verse 13 says, for God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Okay, and that's what I think is really important. It's too bad. I know it's Brian yesterday. He had like the Bible verses on the screen. I'm not as technically advanced as Brian is. And so I don't even know how he did that, but I wish I could show you the verse. So hopefully you have a Bible or Please go and read your Bible after this video. But verse 13 is really important. It says, for God is working in you. And typically that is translated, he's working in you um, for his will. Uh, to, sorry, God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose is how a lot of translations say it. Or it is God who works in you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. And again, we see in the New Living Translation, it, it says, that God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. And so here I think is the crux of the matter. Instead of saying, instead of beating yourself up for not just reading your Bible or beating yourself up for not praying enough. And here's a little fun fact. I've been a Christian for 33 years and I probably will never end a day of my life feeling like I prayed enough. Okay. So that's probably not going to happen. Um, you're probably never going to be as holy as you could be. So instead of trying to beat ourselves up for that kind of thing, and instead of saying, God, would you help me get up early in the morning and get out of bed when really we just need to do it. We need to get out of bed in the morning and, and do the things God's calling us to do. But instead, here's what I think our prayer should be. And it comes from verse 13. The prayer should be, God, give me the desire to be in your word. God, give me the desire to worship you. God, give me the desire to do what pleases you. Because notice, that's what he's saying here. He's saying that, that the reason that you can work out your salvation um, with fear and trembling or that you should work hard to show the results of your salvation, the reason that you can do that, for God is working in you, verse 13. It's not saying, well, you did all the hard, you know, God did all the hard work of salvation. God saved you. God rescued you. 
uh, God, um, Jesus died on the cross for you. He did everything, and now it's just up to you to live as a Christian. No, what he's saying is work hard as a Christian, work out your salvation with fear and trembling because, because of the very fact that God is still working in you. And what is God doing in me as a Christian? What is he working in me? Well, according to verse 13, he is working to give me the desires and the power to do what pleases him. And so if, you know, I'm just sort of stuck in this headspace of, I just need to read my Bible more. I just need to pray more. That's not the best headspace to be in. Instead, I think where I can come to God is I can say, God, would you give me the desires to be in your word? God, would you give me a greater desire for your word than for Netflix? God, would you give me a greater desire to pray than be on Facebook? You know, so, so God is going to answer that prayer, I think, because that's the prayer that we see in Philippians. So if you're beating yourself up about not being with God enough during this COVID time, instead of beating yourself up, instead of trying to say, God, you know, help me to do something that I can do on my own, which is open up my Bible, say, God, will you give me the desires that I need? Lord, would, would you give me more of a desire for you and your word than for other things in my life? And when you do this, then God is also working to help you have the power to do the things that please him. And so a couple things to take away, uh, just a couple things to wrap this up with. First off, if you have a different translation of the Bible in verse 12 there, and it says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling, it's important to know that the word salvation in the Bible in the New Testament often refers to like everything, not just the moment, not just what we call the moment you're forgiven of your sins, not just what we call in the Bible justification, but sometimes the word salvation incorporates everything from being called by God to being glorified, being in his presence in heaven. And so salvation is a pretty broad term, broader than we typically think of. But Philippians 2.12 is not talking about you save yourself. It's talking about it's talking about once you have received the gift of salvation, how God wants you to relate to him. And then verse 13 tells us that God continues to work in your life just as much as he was working to save you and rescue you from your sins. He's working to save you and transform you and make you a new kind of person in verse 13. And so I think a great prayer for us today is say, God, give me the desires, the desires of my heart, uh, make my new desires new and make them be desires that please you. So uh, I just encourage you to try that and, and maybe it can really change the way you approach reading the Bible.